Hey everyone, I'm back and I finally have the Q&A number two up. I, this video is not going to be with Allison, it's going to be with Katie. Hi! <laughs> Katie, introduce yourself. Where are you from? Hi, my name is Katie Brandon Mueller and I am from Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. Okay, and where do you currently live in Thailand? I currently live in Karat, Nakhon Ratchasima province, which is about four hours away from here. She's currently visiting us in Chumpei, and we have made her an honorary Chumpei girl. I definitely feel honored. I love these girls. <laughs> so, you guys sent in a lot of questions, and first of all, thank you so much for that, because it's really nice having questions for a Q&A, that is for sure. <laughs> the main part. <laughs> yeah. This video is going to end up being two parts, because I actually have too many questions to be a semi-decent length video. So let's get started on that. <laughs> Question number one, how strict is your host family? So uh, this really does depend on the host family. Yeah. <laughs> um, my first host family was really not strict. My second host family was quite strict and my third host family isn't strict at all they just kind of let me do whatever I want as long as they know where I'm going my first host family lived outside of the city so if I wanted to do anything my host had always had to go with me um, my second host family is uh, very strict I guess you could say um, I don't do much with the family um, I stay home and I get locked in. <laughs> Which is why she's visiting us in Chupay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she gets fed here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Question number two. two. How are guys here in Thailand and have you been on any dates here? Hmm. So there is a thing that we like to call the foreigner complex here. And basically that has a lot to do with you walking down the street and almost every single time you will hear at least a guy or two say Swai Swai Thank you It means pretty or you will hear beautiful I love you and my favorite I miss, I miss you. you You don't even know me. <laughs> Um I love you in Thailand is just something that they throw out there so if someone says that to you um take it in stride because it will happen a lot. A lot, a lot. Something that Thai guys will always do when they're around you is point out the things that are different from Thai girls that you have. So for <laughs> me, curly hair. For me and you, different colored hair. For both of us, skin color. Skin. And probably one of the more frequent ones is um, chest size they're not shy they will look at you and tell you that your chest is very pretty and that they like your features <laughs> as for have we gone on dates you gotta remember those four or five d's we do not go on dates we do not break the four or five d's of rotary not at all no not at all no. How did you convince your parents to let you go on exchange? So for my family, before I went on exchange, I was already 18. So I kind of had my own say so in what I wanted to do in terms of exchange. So I didn't really need to get their permission. However, they were still very supportive. They went to all the interviews with me. They helped me out with the application process as much as they could. But I. Uh, Overall, pretty supportive, I think. For me, before I left on exchange, I had a tragic accident happen to my family, and um, it actually got to the point where I wasn't sure if I was going to go on exchange. But when my family decided that it was all good, I got to go, and my family was very um, helpful with the exchange process, with the big program, the applications, and they were very, very supportive. Um, I think it's amazing because they know that we have the opportunity to live somewhere else for a year which is amazing to put on any college application or job resume, any. Something to keep in mind for parents is be patient with them. Like, no matter who you are or at what age, it is scary to 
think that your child is going to be on the other side of the world in many situations in a country that they know basically nothing about. I didn't know anything about Thailand when I first got here. <laughs> didn't even know where it was on the map. <laughs> <laughs> I had eaten Thai food once. And that was actually the day that I got the call saying I was going to Thailand. <laughs> Should I apply or defer my enrollment to university or should I wait? No, you should definitely defer your university acceptance. I did the entire application process before I came to Thailand and honestly, I cannot imagine going through this point in time and having to worry about all the applications and all the entrance stuff <laughs> is so articulate. So basically just give yourself a lot less grief and just defer your enrollment. You'll, you won't regret it, trust me. <laughs> money questions. Money, money, money. <laughs> Number one, what is the total cost of the trip, flight and everything included? Um, for RYE Florida, uh, it was about $4,800 and that included everything except for the trips that you take over here. It was flight, insurance, blazer, the trips like in Florida with the Rotary Youth Exchange students there, all the orientations, basically everything. For me it was $2,500 but my district does not include our flights which was another 200 and we buy our blazers um, separately, which is another 300. So all in all, it's about the same price. How selective slash hard is it to get into Rotary Youth Exchange? Um, I mentioned this already, but my school back home kind of already had an in with Rotary Youth Exchange. Being that my school was really, really small, the graduating class was 65 students, and I had five people out of my class going through Rotary Youth Exchange to go to different countries. I kind of already had an in with Rotary Youth Exchange, but overall, I, it is, I think, given the air that it is a very selective program mm -hmm. because they want to send the best students that they have forward to these different countries and be ambassadors for that country. Mm -hmm. My family has been a part of Rotary for 10 years, so I've had an in with Rotary for a very, very long time, and I've been looking forward, dreaming about going on Rotary Youth Exchange. And when I finally got the chance to, I was um, did my application, did everything, worked very hard, and I found that as long as you're very, um, you participate a lot in your community back home and you're intelligent and you're free will and you, you're not shy, that's a big one. Also, that's if maybe you're in the Interact club. Yes, I'm a president, Interact, and Blue Water. <laughs> I was also the secretary of my Interact club and nice. the Interact, yeah. Um, also, the club that sponsored the Interact club is also ended up being my sponsor club, so Bonus. Making yes, making those connections with Rotarians right off the bat. If you can get a sponsor club that way, they already know you. They know who you are. They might mm -hmm. give you a few extra perks. I got nine hundred dollars paid for me to go on this trip because they already knew me, and I said <laughs> that I was struggling with money. Another thing with Rotary is that Rotary has a lot of events throughout the year. Um, yeah. In Canada, we have AIC. Um, all over the world, they've got Ryla. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested on doing Rotary Youth Exchange, definitely contact your local Rotary Clubs about these events, and that'll give you an even bigger in yeah. with the program. How much spending money in USD would you advise a future exchange student to bring with you? Something that you need to keep in mind are the trips over here. I think the trips here ended up being about the equivalent of like 1000 Six hundred to two thousand dollars really depends on the exchange rate at that time. Mm -hmm. So bring the money for that. They usually aren't optional. Um, some people in this district have told me that their clubs really push for them to go, mine included. Um, so a lot of times you can get help 
if you need to, to go on those trips, which I have as well. They'll reduct your monthly allowance. Yeah, so instead of 2,500 baht every month, I get 1,500 baht to get put towards that. As for spending money, I brought about 400 USD to Thailand and I have found that that was not enough. However, I did buy a new camera over here, like a really <laughs> expensive camera. A very <laughs> nice here. camera. Yes. But if you're wanting to make big purchases over here, because it is cheaper over here, the camera that I bought here would have been easily two or three hundred dollars more back in America. So I thought that this was the best option for me. But if you spend frugally, you should be able to get by with about 300 to 400 USD, um, depending on what you do and how much traveling you do. That also has a lot to do with it. How much mm. traveling do you do? Traveling here in Thailand is also very inexpensive. Yeah. Like, my bus ticket here was only 190 baht, which is less than $10 for a four-hour bus ride. Oh, that's not even $10. No. That's like that's, six. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing traveling. Okay, so that should probably be enough for this first video. Um, I will probably upload the second part to this video in about a week. But until then, I will see you later, everybody. <laughs>